Welcome to this demonstration of Cohesity's Data Platform Virtual Edition. In this demonstration, I will walk through the simple deployment and full configuration process for deploying the virtual appliance onto a hyperconverged infrastructure powered by vSphere and Virtual SAN. So in typical vSphere form, the virtual appliance is packaged in an OVA format. So the first thing we have to do is you know, do the traditional process for deploying an OVA. Uh, it could come from either a URL or a local source. In this particular case, I happen to have the OVA locally on one of my uh, computers. So I'm going to basically select it and proceed with the process as you typically do. Provide a name, whichever name that particular instance is going to be registered as part of the vCenter server catalog. Uh, we do the traditional steps, choose the cluster it will run, uh, and you will also then see the sort of uh, uh, the details of the appliance. One thing in particular here, the virtual edition comes in two particular deployment supported options. Uh, the demonstration is one, and also the production. We're going to choose the demonstration here. Now the difference between the two, demonstration and production, is basically uh, the capacity and size in terms of the virtual disk that we're going to consider and configure. Here I'm deploying these virtual appliance onto a virtual SAN cluster, so I chose uh, the traditional and default policies for virtual SAN. Here I'm selecting the network, and that's basically it. I'll click Finish, and from that point on we'll kind of sort of wait a few minutes until the deployment um, is sort of completed. I'll take a look at the process here after kind of speeding up some of the deployment procedures. Uh, very quickly, you can track uh, when the, the appliance is fully deployed. Now, before we turn on the virtual appliance, we'll go on and uh, add a couple of the requirements as listed in the demonstration and production uh, instructions. So here we'll add two additional SCSI controllers uh, and configure them both. And uh, para-virtualized format, VMware para-virtualized, as you can see there, uh, and add the two additional disks that are required for metadata and then also for data itself. You can see that I'm selecting individual controllers to set up the individual disks as well as assigning the actual capacity. Uh, there are some very specific uh, guidance in terms of the size of the disk and the number of disks that are supported, so it's important to pay attention uh, to the instructions depending on what type of deployment you're doing, whether it might be demonstration or for production. They're basically the same process, it's just the difference is the size of the disks that are being utilized. So here I'm at the point where I can actually uh, deploy and turn on the virtual machine. So now the machine is actually up and running. You can see that in the vSphere web client. Once it's up and running, um, obviously I can then go into the appliance itself log in to the IP address that's been locally assigned. At this point, you'll be able to provide the different uh, in all the different types of uh, IP required configuration settings for the appliance, starting with a particular cluster name, uh, all the different information that are required with regards to uh, anything that is going to be particular about the cluster itself. Uh, IP information related, gateways, uh, subnet mask, uh, the IP address of the actual appliance, um, search domains, DNS service, servers, uh, NTP servers, uh, and then some of the additional uh, either cluster-based configuration that we may want to configure. In this particular case, I'm referring to the encryption settings, whether you want to enable that at the cluster level uh, or do you want to do that per view boxes later on. So here I enable all the capabilities as you can see um, and after that it's pretty much uh, fairly quick in terms of how the cluster gets set up this is in typical fashion and is exactly the same procedure as we do that on a uh, physical uh, appliance uh, deployment once that's fully configured now you can log in uh, go through the acceptance of the EULA hopefully you agree with everything that's in there if not you're in trouble uh, we provide and enter the license key for the cluster I'm obviously going to block this out so not everyone can use this one but at this point once you've successfully submitted the information you can see that the cluster is up and running uh, now the only things that are left is just basically uh, configure the actual partitions how we're going to uh, 
allocate and consume the partitions in the cluster. We provide a name, provide a host name. Uh, you can see how now the next thing to do is the view box, which is that logical construct that allows you to consume uh, capacity and, and, and set up uh, individual features and functions, as you'll see here. Uh, for example, I'm using a, a view box named vSAN. Uh, the partition is the one I just created where it can add the duplication and all the different space space efficiency features that the data platform provides. Uh, encryption is grayed out, obviously, because we're using it in this case at the cluster level. So with that, you can basically see that I've configured uh, the view box. Now the next thing is to add a source. This is a VMware specific deployment and the source will be a vCenter server. So very quickly, I can move on to the configuration aspect of the re register VMware source, uh, provide vCenter server credentials um, and addresses. And I can then very quickly say register and you can see how immediately I can identify from the Cohesity cluster the, the information from vCenter server. So now the next thing to do is very quickly uh, get either a protection job working or some of the other functions. But in this case, I'm going to very quickly configure a protection job for virtual infrastructures. I'll select one of the default policies that come within the system uh, in terms of the, the backup and the functions that are going to run, how long and how fast, how frequent. Provide some sort of name that may be helpful or, just, or provide a description if you need to. In this case, I'm just kind of moving through it. Now the next step is choose the actual objects that you want to protect. Um, I'm going to have a look at the infrastructure through the supported folder view and identify the particular virtual machines that I want to protect. And in this case, I'm going to simply select one, uh, very quickly hit next, and that's it. Uh, now the actual job is sort of uh, configured and you can see that it's already begun. And in terms of uh, the protection process, this obviously can change uh, depending on the number of virtual machines or whatnot, what's being protected and how long it will take to actually complete. And that's basically it. Once a protection job is completed, uh, you'll be able to look at the results and the overview and the home dashboard and see how everything went just fine. And that's about it. Thank you for watching.